practiced in the stadium today, got a feel for uh, you know some game situations, uh, a lot of ST, a lot of situational work. You know, really the finishing touches on uh, you know preparing for Temple. I know our guys are uh, anxious to play. Um, you know, certainly uh, a lot of preparation uh, goes into uh, an opener, as we talked about earlier in the week. A lot of things that we're not certain about, but there's a couple of things that we really are clear on, and that is uh, our guys are excited about uh, playing at home uh, to open up the 2013 season. So a lot of excitement. Um, guys are ready to play and uh, ready to kick this season off. So with that, I'll uh, open it up to questions. Brian, how do you handle uh, line calls, protection calls? Is, is Nick Martin ready to do that, or how do you handle that? Uh, Tommy will handle... Uh, a lot of that, uh, you know, Nick's Nick's going to, um, you know, make some of the calls, but we've made some adjustments with, uh, you know, a younger center, uh, and uh, you know, Tommy will do a lot of that work uh, himself. Brandon, a couple of quarterback questions. Yeah. Do you anticipate <clears throat> having Malik available Saturday, and then also, what'd you end up doing with the scout team? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this morning, uh, our last uh, blood workup for Malik was that um, he is not going to be able to play on Saturday. Uh, so Luke Massa took reps this week a as our third quarterback. Um, Will Cronin, uh, a walk-on who we brought in as part of our 105, um, was scout team quarterback along with Richard Kinlaw. Both of those young men uh, were, were the scout team quarterbacks uh, this week. Uh, but Luke got a lot of reps as our number three this week. Do, do you anticipate this going longer than this week with Malik? No, we were hopeful. He was on the back end of it, um, you know, but uh, and we were really hopeful that we thought we were going to get him cleared today. Uh, but he's just not, he's not, he didn't get cleared. So. Um, we're gonna we're gonna be hopeful for Monday. Ryan, I just want to. I think earlier in the month you talked to Dan Wetzel about some big picture things. You know, having maybe more of a seat at the table around some things around the university. Uh, you know, having a voice there. How do you feel like that's developed over the last six nine months in terms of you know being able to have more of a hand or at least know who to call in Res Life and you know having a dialogue there. Yeah. Well, you know, I think those big picture items are a product of being here going on four years. And uh, to be accurate, and I know the article that you're referring to, um, I don't know that I want a voice. I, I, I just want to be part of the conversation. Um, and, and I think the, the communication is what I'm interested in more than anything else. Um, Notre Dame has Duloc. Notre Dame has their policies, and I am 100% behind all of those. I just want to be in the discussion. I want to be in the conversation. My voice doesn't need to be heard, per se, as much as I want to be in the loop uh, when those decisions are made. Because when I make a commitment to a young man um, and his parents relative to looking out for him, I want to be able to live up to that commitment. So um, that's really all that's about, Pete, more than anything else, is just um, I want to I be in that loop of communication. That's it. Are you in it now? You feel like I believe I am. I believe I feel very comfortable that we have made substantial progress uh, to that end. And I think it's like anything else. I mean, you know, there's a crack in the Sistine Chapel. I mean, we, it's not perfect at Notre Dame, and it's not perfect at Alabama. It's not perfect, but we are committed to it, and Father John's committed to it, Jack Swarbrick. We're all committed to getting better every day, and that's all I want. I don't want to be perfect. I just want to keep getting better every single day, and I really believe that we're getting better at it every day. Do you think that being here for a fourth year accelerates being part of the conversation, or do you think that going 12-1 and one accelerates being part of that conversation? Being here for me, regardless of what the record is, uh, accelerates that conversation. 
for me because we're building a program, not just one year. You know, one record should not be about how you run uh, a program. So this is more about how to run a program uh, year in and year out. Thanks. Yeah, sure. Correction. Just to follow up on that, in a previous interview with Res Life from, I think it was before you were here, from several years ago, they mentioned they thought one of the problems might be that the, the coach can't be the advocate for the player. It was, it was a rule that the coach could yeah. be the player's advocate. Is that something that can be changed or discussed? Is that, is that a part of this issue? Well, I disagree with that premise, obviously. Um, I believe that's short-sighted, uh, and, and I think that's a flawed premise as it relates to advocacy. Uh, and, and I think that cuts across student life. I think that cuts across uh, academics. I think that cuts across everything as it relates to being a student athlete. And so that's kind of the crux of where we are in terms of this old model that the football coach is trying to protect his players. Uh, I, don't, I don't subscribe to that. Um, he should be accountable for his actions on a day-to-day -day basis, um, but we should all be part of the dialogue. A couple of wide receiver questions. How did the Josh Atkinson experiment go? And, and then C.J. Procise had such a strong spring. We haven't heard a lot about him this fall. Where is he? Well, I don't... The, I mean, you use like experiment, like, I don't know, he's going to take time, you know, it's not going to be a one, the, the guy can fly, he's fast as heck, I mean, he can run, it's going to take us a little time, we, we want to keep his skills as a DB, but we also think that we can, there's a, there's a lot of DBs that can play, and, but I, I want to try to find a place to get him on the field, and I think we can find some roles for the kid, but it's going to take us some time, you know, to get him on the field offensively. And we're working on him. We're trying to get some routes that he can handle. Um, he's got to catch the ball more consistently. That's, that's what he has to work on right now. But he is all in to trying to do that. So it's going to take us some time to do it. I don't know when that's going to be, but we're, we're all in and it's going to take some time on him. CJ's been steady for us. You know, we're going to ask him to do some specific things. He's not going to be that guy that, like Robbie Toma, is, you know, Robbie was, was on the field a lot for us. He's not going to fit in like Robbie did. He's going to do different jobs, and he's going to do them well for us, but he's not going to be as uh, an A to Z slot receiver like Robbie was. Coach, could you talk about Coach Alford? I, he's gone through so much this yeah. fall, and just – how he's handled it and how the Notre Dame coaching family has come together for him. Well, it seems every year we've been tested on our staff with some, you know, tough personal um, challenges. And, um, you know, our first year, Mike Elston um, was, was sick to the, to the point where, you know, we weren't sure what was going to happen to him. And then, of course, Coach Elliott and this year with the, the loss of, of uh, Tony's brother, um, we've all had to you know, kind of rally each year. And our staff's been great, our support staff and the Notre Dame community has been great. And, you know, I think like any other, um, you know, human being, he's had some good days and bad days. But he's got his players, you know, that I think really helps him out a lot. And he gets immersed in that on a day-to-day -day basis. He's here, you know, a lot, 80 hours. So I think that really helps him a lot. But um, he's got the support of his, his you know, players and, and coaches, and I think that gets them through it. All right, how has Luke looked at quarterback? And can you talk about a little, talk about him a little bit, a guy that's been a good behind the scenes guy for you? Yeah, I mean, you know, he holds for extra points for us and he'll start at that position. He's playing some wide receiver. You know, immediately we put him in there quarterback and, you know, you know, we could put him in the game on Saturday. He could get us out of the game. I mean, I don't want to play him. If, if I don't have to, um, it'd have to be an emergency situation, but he can get us out of the game um, uh, on Saturday. He's just, he's a great teammate. And he's a kid that does whatever we ask him to do. Uh, and uh, for a guy who had uh, two days or three days of work, uh, like I said, um, it'd be nice if we got him in the game and it wasn't because of injury. Right, are you to the point 
offensively where if you win the toss, you can automatically take the kickoff? Oh, I feel a whole lot better about doing it now than I did in the first couple of years, that's for sure. No question about that. I asked you the other day about players that have made the most improvement in camp. You gave me some older guys. Who, who would a freshman or two be that have made the greatest strides since you opened in Shiloh Park? Uh, freshman? Um, I would probably say James Onowalu. Uh, you know, he went from a guy that, uh, you know, was a try hard guy, you know, whatever we asked him to do, to, you know, he's catching the ball much more consistently, route running. Uh, I think he's done a nice job. I think defensively, you know, for a freshman, you know, I'd probably, you know, I, 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 I mean, there's two guys at the freshman level that um, have really surprised me. I think Cole Luke, you know, his ability to play corner at this level as a true freshman, and nickel. I mean, that's a lot. You know, he's had to learn nickel, which now you're playing multiple coverages, whether it's two trail or man, and then having to play quarters, mix. There's a lot of things on his plate. I think he's made some really good progress. So those, those couple of guys have done a lot. Now that it's here, do you feel like it's it's flown by since your last game? Uh, it has, uh, but you know it's it's one of those things where this is what we this is what we live for is to get back into the routine of you know coaching and practice and uh, th these are the things we enjoy more than um, you know all the other things that come with the job. Sheldon was somebody you mentioned who could go eight straight plays. Have yeah. you seen as the August campus progressed? Whether a Lewis or a Stefan are able to expand their own volume or others? It depends what the weather conditions are and it depends what kind of game it is. I mean, if it's a heavyweight battle, you know, where, you know, it's right at you, they could play play after play. If it's Stanford, if it's, you know, Michigan State probably could play play after play. If it's a dink and dunk and they want to throw it right and for two yards and race you all the way to the sideline and then throw it to the other sideline and race you all the way over there, you know, probably not, you know, um, which is, you know, probably what they'll try to do. I know that's what I would try to do, you know, try to get those guys tired. So it really just depends on how they want to play the game. But, you know, that, you know, that, that plays to us in other areas. So it really just depends on how they want to play the game. You know, if they want to just try to do that, then, um, you know, that, that's, that's an interesting, you know, opportunity for us to do other things. So they're in much better condition. Um, we feel like we're in a better place with them this year than we were last year. Um, we'll just have to see how it goes on Saturday. It's going to be warm and we're going to have to play a lot of guys. I mean, we're going to have to play a lot of guys anyway. So it's not like they're going to stay out there for the whole game. Are we good? Good. Thanks. Thank you.